Day 8 of the Commission of Inquiry into the events surrounding the March 2, 2020 general and regional elections saw several new witnesses come forward to provide evidence to the Commission. Former counting agent for the People's Progressive Party Civic and now Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson this morning testified before the Commission. In his testimony, Ramson vividly described what occurred with the chairperson of GCOM, retired Justice Claudette Singh, as she was hurriedly being escorted out of the facility. He testified that he saw Justice Singh and APNU AFC nominated Commissioner Charles Corbin coming down the stairway of the Ashman's building. But Ramson said this wasn't just a casual walk down the step. Shortly after, um, there was the, what purported to be the um, announcement by Claremont Mingo. Uh, I saw the chairman of GCOM coming down the stairs um, and Mr. Corbin um, huddling her as she was coming around, coming down the stairs, uh, seemingly to prevent other people from getting close to her. So as she was walking, he was effectively engulfing her, moving from side to side. I remember this distinctly because it was one of the most peculiar as well as disturbing things that I saw around that period, which stood out because there were many disturbing things that happened at that time. Sure. But he was huddling her as she was moving, preventing anybody from getting close to her. Following the first false declaration by District 4 returning officer Claremont Mingo, Ramson said he proceeded to draft a letter requesting a recount as is his right to do as a counting agent. Well, I attempted to uh, serve this letter on Mr. Mingo who uh, was already up on the top floor and uh, I was blocked by police officers who were manning the stairway. Ramson testified that he eventually got to the upper floor in search of Mingo. He pointed out that on every door on the third floor, the handles were removed, but the doors were locked and there was no way of getting on the other side of the door from where he was. After constantly rapping on doors hoping someone would respond and he would find the returning officer, Ramson said he practically concluded that Mingo was not on the third floor and proceeded back to the lower flats of the building. It was at this point in his testimony Ramson disclosed what appeared to be a clear collusion between the Guyana Police Force and some of the high-ranking members of GCOM in preventing Ramson from serving the request for a recount on Claremont Mingo. We waited for a while. It was already um, getting late into the evening at that point. Um, and then I saw Mr. Mingo emerge from the top floor. The position that I was in I was able to see what was happening um, on the top floor uh, and this is from the ground floor and I saw him emerge but he was um, uh, circled uh, by police officers all in uniform um, and they were rapidly escorting him uh, down the back stairway so another stairway um, but I can see it because there were glass doors uh, that you can see portions of where and when he was moving. While this purported emergency evacuation was taking place, Ramson said he proceeded to run up the step in an attempt to serve the letter on Mingo. When we opened the door, moving into uh, one of the sections, but still a little way away from him, um, police officers stopped me once again and prevented me from proceeding. Furnishing the commission with a copy of the letter, Ramson said he wrote to Mingo in his official capacity, then as counting agent for the PBPC, successfully delivering the letter with the request just seven minutes prior to the deadline on March 6. It was believed that at that point, there would be a recount that would happen immediately. Also testifying yesterday was Elston Beard, a policeman attached to the Office of Professional Responsibility. Beard provided the commission with evidence of entries made by police ranks who entered the Ashman's building due to a report of a bomb scare on March 5, 2020. Based on the entries made by the ranks and given in evidence to the commission, an attempt was not even made to search the building for a bomb. The attempt that was made, however, was to get everyone out of the building. Further, 
Member of the Tactical Services Unit, Deputy Superintendent Ronald Ali, also testified before the Commission and revealed that there were specific instructions given to the Tactical Services Unit. On the afternoon of the 5th of March 2020, did DSP Davis receive a phone call? Yes, he did. And he then spoke to you? Yes. What did he tell you? He told me that the unit have to go to Ashman's building. To do what? To get the chief chairman out of the building because the building is being overrun by a lot of people. Did you eventually get to the chairman's office? Yes, we did. And what did you do? There were a, a side door attached to the office. We made our way through that door and through the back exit of the Ashman's building. The now deputy superintendent then revealed the names of police officers who gave and received instructions to return to the Ashman's building for a special yet unusual mission. Did superintendent nurse give some more instructions? Yes. To whom? The deputy superintendent Davis. And this was done in your presence? Yes. And what did he say to DSP Davis? He told him the unit has to go back to Ashman's building. To clear the building, everyone needs to come out and the building needs to be secured under locks and keys. Ali's testimony on the events of March 5, 2020 adds to the strong suspicion that some senior ranks of the Guyana Police Force played a pivotal role in the attempt to subvert the smooth flow of the electoral process. In yesterday's testimony, several pieces of evidence were submitted to the Commission and testimonies given from accredited observers Rosalinda Razul and Captain Jerry Govayo. Also, former Deputy Returning Officer for District 4 Paul Jai Singh testified and related to the Commission his experiences at the Ashman's building where he was assaulted and a threat was made on his life. The Commission of Inquiry was set up by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali to inquire into the events surrounding the March 2, 2020 general and regional elections. The Commission of Inquiry was set up by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali to inquire into the events surrounding the March 2, 2020 general and regional elections.